Major Garrett joins us from Washington this morning. Major, uh, this controversial tweet from a uh, Trump surrogate comes at a time when the candidate is trying to reach out to minorities. Is there any evidence that effort is working, or at least in the minds of disaffected whites concerned that he may have bias? Well, the polls are tightening a bit nationally, so it might at the very margins be having some positive effect for Trump. But as far as this minority outreach, it's never actually occurred where many minorities in this country actually live. That's to happen for the very first time this Saturday in Detroit and this entire controversy over Pastor Mark Burns, who is for Trump supporters a well-known surrogate and warm-up act now tweeting this cartoon image of Hillary Clinton in blackface. I mean, that puts a damper, to put it mildly, on this minority outreach set to begin in Detroit this weekend. The two will appear together, Pastor Burns and Trump, first at a church service and then at an interview for an African-American Christian television network. And all of this adds to the sort of caricature around this minority outreach for Trump. In one, on one hand, he describes life in urban America as almost unlivable and unimaginably grimy and filled with crime and poverty and no educational hope. And the statistics don't back any of that up. They back up maybe some increase in crime in some urban areas. But in the main, urban America now is safer than it was 30 years ago. And so Trump's whole portrait of life in urban America as being so depressing and so unhappy doesn't comport with reality. So that's an odd way to try to win votes. And now this controversy certainly doesn't do anything to assist that. If anything, it undercuts it and quite visibly. You use the word major caricature, but I'm curious this incident, what does it tell you about the campaign leadership? So many times people look at this as the campaign leadership going off the rails and not quite sticking to message, but can you blame them for something that their surrogate does? You can't blame the leadership for what a surrogate does, but you can blame the leadership for understanding that this surrogate's never been under the pressure of a national campaign. And the one thing about the Trump campaign is they like to say, look, we have lots of different people, lots of different voices. They haven't been through this process before. That's an asset because they're new to politics, they're energized, they're passionate. Okay, that's on the plus side of never having been through the rigors and the testing that comes with the national campaign. The downside is national campaigns are hard. They work at you. They grind you down. You're criticized all the time. You're in the public eye in ways you've never been before. Everything you say is sifted in ways it's never been said before. And your temper can rise. You can do things in a flash of anger or a flash of misjudgment. And when you haven't been through that process before, mistakes are going to be made. And that's exactly what happened to Pastor Mark Burns. He did something that he had to apologize for and retract even though his initial impulse was to say, I did nothing wrong. That's what happens when you're under pressure, when you're under stress, and when you're under the heat and fire of a national campaign. So the Trump campaign organization, to the degree it exists, can be blamed for that, but they know they'd much rather have Mark Burns, at least now, inside the tent than outside it, so inside the tent he will remain. And there is more pressure to come. Uh, Trump will have the national spotlight tomorrow in Arizona. He is scheduled to give this highly anticipated speech on immigration. Highly anticipated because there's been some confusion as to what the Trump policy will be toward the estimated 11 million undocumented workers in the country. He's both said that there will be a deportation force in previous interviews and uh, said that he's going to take a humane approach, which possibly would include a path to citizenship although that is referred to as amnesty, something that Republicans have been staunchly against. Any clues as to what he will lay out tomorrow in Arizona? Well, the Trump campaign, through its campaign manager, Kellyanne Conway, promises specifics on this question about what the deportation approach of Donald Trump will be. And if it's anything short of what he has promised earlier in this campaign, which is a deportation force that anyone who is here without proper documentation not only has to leave, but has to leave sooner rather than later, go back to their country of origin and get at the back of the line for legal readmittance to the United States, many of his core supporters will be deeply disappointed. And the political fallout from that could be problematic for Trump, to put it mildly. If those specifics are there, then the country will know. If they are not, then the country will be forced to live in the 
very opaque world it has for the last two weeks, where Trump has been trying to massage the language around deportation without explaining exactly what he means. What does fair and humane deportation mean? No one really knows. Mike Pence, the running mate for Donald Trump, when I interviewed him last week, he couldn't describe it. Donald Trump has it, nor has anyone around him been able to explain it. And then you have the reality, if Donald Trump becomes president, whatever idea he has to submit on this very difficult, complex topic would have to be dealt with by the U.S. Congress. And there's no clear impression that I've gotten from Republicans in Congress what they want to do or the direction they believe Donald Trump wants to lead them. Lead them. So it's all quite a muddle, and we'll see Wednesday if in any way, shape, or form it's cleared up. Okay, so the timing is critical there. Major Garrett in Washington, Major, thank you. Sure.